So you broke the seal, which I expected. I did. I I knew I, I knew it was gonna happen, dude. I already knew. <sighs> you know, I'd be lying if I said I still wasn't proud of myself. I made it a whopping. Hang on, what are we at? Uh, twenty eight days, dude. Twenty days. Twenty eight days. Almost a full month. Was uh, so. Was your goal thirty days? Yeah, it was to do the month of January and then pace myself out and. Uh, not, not do the entire year, but like have you know, special occasion drink like weddings, birthdays type of thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, even one is a special occasion for us fucking musicians, dude. That's like a, a four day fucking wedding slash birthday party slash Fuck. homie hangout. That's really why people go to Nam, dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The you know, the suits and ties they go to fucking do business and you know, the the that side of things, you know, you mm-hmm. and I. I mean, you know, we go to conduct business too, but it's just, it's an excuse to see all your friends in one place at the beginning of the year. I mean, that's kind of how I've always seen it, you know, because, you know, we have friends that are in bands that live in other parts of the world, other yep. states, you know, and it's like, uh, and also this was like what I consider to be the first full scale NAM back from COVID, mm-hmm. which, you know, it still wasn't like in like full scale back, but it was for the most part, the most complete one since 2020. Yeah, I was curious how it was going to turn out. Yeah. I was like, it's probably not going to be insanely packed, but I know people are going to be uh, watching and see how what the turnout's going to be. You know? It was, yeah. it was, good, it was good turnout. It, it was nice. It was. Somebody said to me Thursday, uh, Thursday they were like, we actually saw more people Thursday than we expected. So we were like, oh, we kind of weren't planning on that. Huh. And then, you know, we were there Friday, and then yesterday was nuts. Really? It was fucking crazy. Like, uh... Uh, we, uh, oh, yeah. We oh, we you saw when we were walking past like Petrucci doing the signing and stuff like that. Oh, like, yeah, we fucking ran into him. The guard was like, "Oh, where are you going? You gotta go the other way." I'm like, "Oh, my bad." I was like, "Wait, what a dick!" Oh, wait, fucking John, I'm all John JP, signing dude. right now. What up, dude? What's up, dude? <laughs> Ripper. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It felt it felt almost 100 percent normal again. Like you know, people mm-hmm. are walking around coughing on each other, fucking breathing each other's gross air. I'm like, damn. Nam's back, baby. I think uh, I think next year it'll be full on chaos, worse worse than than this one. You know, what I mean, this was the warm up to it. I, think. I really feel almost like you can't beat at the in person stuff. I'm just real. No. I was like, I know a lot of companies weren't there, but I was like, yes. If they, if, if they find out how many people actually went and they see it's coming back now, I'm really curious about I, next year. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I think next year will be full fledged. Like mm. really, there was definitely some 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 sorely missed companies for sure. But you know, sure. I also understand that because things are still kind of, I don't want to say like reeling over from COVID, but like they, a lot of company, a lot of big companies have found that they probably don't need to be there Mm -hmm. as as like crucial, you know, because they have such a a massive name or following. They can just be like, hey, we're going to release our products online for the world to see and you don't have to worry about going in person and seeing anything like, and shit, I, I didn't even know, dude, like. I was looking forward to seeing Eric and Zildjian and Vic and being like, hey, you know what's going on? It's, you know, they weren't there. I was like, oh, shit, mm. okay, cool, you know? But it was still a good time. I, you know, locked in locked in some cool stuff. I'm very excited for the rest of the year now, gear-wise. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, it was a good time. Great. Well, good time. Ernie, this one's to you. Shh, dude, break. So you almost made it <laughs> I 30 almost days. almost made it. The, you, the you old college try. To 28 days, <laughs> 28 and, you, and, days and, and you broke the seal I did. at 28. I did. I think, I think you did a good job, and to be honest, it's not a diss to you. It is. But uh, you you, <laughs> you did better than I thought you were going to be. I'll mean, give him like two weeks. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Dude, honestly, I did better than I thought I was going to do. I thought I was going to fucking blow it. <laughs> mm. 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 Ooh. Yeah. Okay, question is now, are you going to make make it happen now? Are, are you going to drink less? Oh, yeah, as, yeah. Okay, good. Absolutely. That, and that's the thing, too. Like, I'm... I'm Stay away from me, then. Yeah. You know, the, ni- the, ni- <laughs> the nice thing is, the nice thing is, you're the beer guy, though. So that's why I don't never have to, because I don't like beer. So I don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? Like, we sure. can go out and have a beer, and I'll get a nice tea, and I'm like, I'm fine. Sure. You know, like, if you do Korean barbecue, everyone's getting Asahi. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll get iced tea. You know? The, the, yeah. That shit doesn't bother me. It's it's it is very much the environment and your surroundings for it sure. It is, it you is. know, like the uh, the cats that I was hanging with yesterday lent lent themselves to to partying. I knew it was gonna happen. I, we got in the car, got to Nam, and I was like, okay. <laughs> we, we, what was the first drink? Uh, I had a very large shot of uh, Crystal Palace. 
vodka, which is like a four dollar bottle of vodka. It's just it's rubbing alcohol. Ooh. Yeah. Not as bad as you would think, though, for a value brand of plastic bottle vodka. I've I've had shittier tasting expensive vodka. Man, I would like do something like a little bit more enjoyable. Like, hey, let me have a nice drink and just enjoy this. Said you took a large shot, you couldn't really enjoy it. I, oh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I mean, <laughs> when you don't drink for a while and you had the I, the first one, like there is a nice feeling to it. Yeah, you're like, whoa! Oh. I forgot what this is like. That is that it right there. That, that's that's the, the one. I right never seen there, that bottle dude. in my life. You know why? Because you never look that far down at the shelf because oh. that's where that kind of liquor's sitting at, dude. That's why. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dude. But here, but here's the thing. Uh that is a hangover. That's it. That was you last night. Right? D- yo, two how handles. Got, how did you find that picture of me so fast, dude? Oh, that's fucking fuck. crazy, dude. Is this tacky right here? What, the goose? Yeah. No way, dude. We got to get that goose endorsement, dude. Oh, my. Okay, you're right. Okay, we're tr- <laughs> trying to get something, dude. My gosh. Dude, nothing's better than the goose. You know, maybe Belvedere, but they're made by the same people, so, you know. Um, Yeah. Uh, that's not a good one for its back, man. <laughs> that's not a That's good such one. a drummer or bass player move. It Damn, is. You're it right. It is. You're right. Also, also the, I guess, like, all joking Idiots. aside, I did, I did kind of notice it, that it, like, I'm fucking terrible. I don't like public speaking. No. And like as much as I am, you know, a drummer, you know, and yada, 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 and, you know, and I, and I talk to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I noticed it for the first, like I said, two weeks ago when I went to the um, the issues after party in, in L.A. Mm-hmm. That's the first time in a long time that I've been in a room with people completely sober and like trying to have a conversation. And I found it really difficult. I was really? like, oh, Are shit. you serious? It was a little strange, dude. Like it wasn't bad, but I was like. Uh, it was the first, like, it was the first time encountering people that I've normally encountered when I was either, you know, and I kind of noticed it was just more of like having a drink in my hand. Like, it's a weird vice, but it's just like, oh, I feel a little more ease if, you know. Yes, in your hand. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's a mental thing. I think that I actually don't need it there, Mm -hmm. but it's just like, it's like a safety blanket type of thing, which is really weird because I mean, I talk to fucking everyone. Like when we're on tour, dude, I'm fucking, I'm the last person back on the bus. You're the social guy. Yeah. You know, but it's like it's it was a weird like situation to be in. I was like, oh, this is fuck. What am I supposed to say to this fucking person? I'm Whoa. just I'm having soda water with lime, and I'm all bushy eyed and sober. You know, so then I just wound up getting really stoned, and then it was okay. <laughs> but like, yeah, fuck. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, definitely like what I what it has done for me, and I I'm glad you brought it up. Like, yeah, it's definitely like made it okay that I know I can just. Have a drink once a month, you know, Good. hang out with somebody. And, and, you know, I don't have to fucking party or get all fucked up or anything like that. It, we're getting older. Bodies don't heal the same fucking way. And I, and I don't like feeling that way either anyway to begin with. Like, no. I tell everyone. Everyone's like, you know, you know, the, you know, a lot of the guys in bands drink, you know, and all that stuff. You know, some of them drink on stage or whatever and all that stuff. Some people can just get fucking smashed before going on stage. Yeah. As a drummer playing deathcore. It's not happening, dude. You can't do that kind of thing. You can't do that kind of thing and expect to have a good performance like – that's mm-hmm. pretty much where I draw the line. Like, you know, we do our celebratory shot before walking on stage. That's it. That's the most I'll ever do. Like, I, I'm like, I'm not trying to drink on stage. Yeah. Even remotely, like, it just, I don't know. I, I know mentally it'll ruin my performance, and then physically it'll probably affect it at some at some level, you know? Yeah. So I just, I like good old-fashioned ice-cold water, dude, on stage. Do you know, even met people that don't like water. I, Dude, the, I, most, I, <laughs> the most refreshing thing ever is like ice cold, not like just cold water, just ice cold water, and you just chug it. Oh, dude, I just nothing like it. Dude, shout out Brandon Cagle, dude, in my Whitechapel days. I think I saw Cagle drink water like twice, dude. That man lives on a glass bottle Coca Cola, Mexico. Huh. That's his shit, bro. On the rider. It's on the rider. He drinks Coca Cola and eats Oreos and junk food, and he's <sighs> still handsome. Dude, soda. I cannot <laughs> fuck with soda, dude. <laughs> Cannot fuck with soda. I don't, I don't drink soda either. You know, like oh, dude, such a waste of that. It's such a waste of calories. It's yeah, just, just fucking eat, eat some pizza or eat. The, like, okay, yes, dude. As a as a as a fucking fellow fat kid, bro. Like if you're gonna you're gonna drink your fucking calories in a soda, so have a fucking dumb. cheeseburger, dude. Like at least that's you know. I, but also, I know I know people that are like soda fiends. Sure, and it's like it's like crack, dude. They're like, oh yeah, no, like I have to have, you know, a Diet Coke, a Dr Pepper, mm-hmm. or what you know, whatever. Uh, uh, it's like almost like like cigarettes, like for, like it's like 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 so, diet soda for some people is like smoking cigarettes. Mm-hmm. You know, oh yeah, you know I'm a two pack a day kind of guy. I know people that'll tear through a fucking eighteen pack of fucking diet coke in a day. Oh my, it's fucking God. crazy, dude. Like, 
You know, I don't know. I stopped drinking soda when I was like 17. I just, and I'm also, age. I'm not a big sweets guy. And I think that's kind of why I just was a, I, like, and, and admittedly it changed somewhere down the line. I used to, if you're from California or the West Coast and you know what Cactus Cooler is. Mm-hmm. Cactus Cooler was my shit, bro. I used to be able to fucking tackle a two liter in like four or five minutes. <laughs> I'm not even fucking kidding, dude. On a hot day, come home from school, dude, just pound a fucking two liter of Cactus oh. Cooler. You know, then I turned 21 and started drinking Cactus Cooler with vodka and it's yeah. a, a great fucking cocktail also. And that's, fun, and that's and, why you're a drummer. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just kind of grew out of the soda thing. And, and it wasn't like, I didn't miss it. Hmm. You know, I like fizzy water. Like, you know, we, we all do like fucking LaCroix. Yeah. You know, I love that shit. People are like, why? It just tastes like fucking microwave static. <laughs> I'm just like, I like it. That's no, good. You uh, you're, always, you're always in your life, you're always choosing the less of the evils. Yeah. Okay. Let, yeah. Uh, let, let, let's say you have a soda. You have a soda here with no sugar. Just, Correct. just take the one with no sugar, or if it's uh, yeah, you know, a drink or a food, or yeah, you're always kind of you're just trying to get through the day. Sometimes, dude. dude, the the American diet, the Western diet, is overwhelming. They give you too many options, mm-hmm. and I think that's a problem sometimes. Which is why I love going to Europe. The food's better. It's healthier for you. Europe might be the only place you can go and eat McDonald's every day for a month and lose weight. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, their their fast food out there is next level. Yeah, it's they don't. Sick. It's not chock full of fucking crazy chemicals and shit, dude. Like, True. sure, it'll spoil faster if you leave it sitting overnight, but mm-hmm. it won't fuck up your like body. It's kind of nuts, no. dude. Like, and and listen, I'm a true testament to that, dude. I'm not the thinnest person in the world, but every time that I've gone to Europe, I've lost weight, not even changing the eating habit. Mm. Like, you know, I could, dude. I'll eat carbs over there. I'll have bread and cheese every fucking day, and come home like nine, ten pounds lighter. And I'm like, I didn't do anything fucking different that I don't do here. Hmm. You know what I mean? So it's kind of it's kind of fucking wild. But I've heard it from other people too. Steven Sanchez is like, oh, bro, he's like, I get mad fucking skinny when I go to Europe. I'm like, I mean, he's already a twig, you know. But you, it's like, it's true. You, it's, the food the food's better. You are talking about smaller portions. That too. Know? That too. Yeah, because the uh, the the portions here, you know. Dude, they got they got the vegan chicken nuggets. Say, Jake, uh, can you type in McDonald's Europe? Vegan chicken nuggets. Oh, yeah. That's right. They were fucking sick. And they have the McPlant, dude. I'm not vegan, dude. Dude, they any. are. Boom. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and they were actually fucking good, too. You like, cannot fuck with those, dude. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Dude, Europe Europe is really 10 for 10 for the traveling tour parties that got McPlant vegans in the pack. nuggets? The McPlant, dude. McPlant? Is, is that? the No, the McPlant is their, is their vegan burger. It's the it's like a fucking, it's like a, like a quarter pounder, but it's a fucking vegan patty. And it's actually dope. Hmm. Like, and I'm a fucking meat eater, bro. I'm not a vegan by any means. And uh, I forgot who was with us that got one when we ate fucking McDonald's 80 times a fucking day in Germany. If somebody ordered it, it might have been like, oh, who was with us in Europe the first time? Was it Tom? Did Tom go with us? The first time we were in in the van. It, yeah, in the Sprinter. Yeah. Yes. I think he got a McPlant, like for shits and gigs, and it was fucking good. Sick. Oh, Mark, or Mark got one. Yeah. One of them got one. And I took a bite, and I was like, damn. It's kind of fire. I don't know. No, I would, I would order it again. You know, dude. The uh, the the order of these episodes. So the first one's gonna come out. Last. Yes. So if you're listening, watching, <laughs> you're you're listening to Ernie saying, "Yeah, I'm I'm not, I'm not drinking for a month," and uh, and then the next one is, I bro- I broke the seal. You will <laughs> <laughs> not it's, even a full month later, dude. No, I, I will give you credit. You are more disciplined to to uh, than what I'm projecting to people. Listen and watch it. It, it, just, it just looks bad because we recorded that two weeks ago. And, yeah. And, and then we're, and we're dropping him back to back. But just know, it's just, it's just funny. He's like, guys, he's back on the Zaz. Didn't even make it a full 30 days. <laughs> I, made, I made it one week, boys. <laughs> Let's celebrate with a drink. Fuck it. Well, dude, it takes, uh, what, 21 days to build a habit? AJ, can yes. you type in how many days does it take to build a habit? I want to say it's 21. There, or, or vice versa, or break a bad habit. It's that. Like, Either or, I think it's 21 days. Yeah. Well, I saw some crazy number up there, dude. 67, uh, days. 66 days was required to form a habit with a range between 18 to 254 days. Mm. That's a pretty fucking wide gap, dude. <laughs> like That gap doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right? That's a that's a really large like deficit in between. Like mm-hmm. 
18 to 254 days. You're like, you know what? I could take half a month to kill oh, this so habit so, or almost okay, an entire so year. People also ask, is it true that it takes 21 days to form a habit? However, oh, it's a myth. Wait, uh, okay, wait. So, however, research has shown that the 21-day rule is a myth. In, in a study published in the European Journal of Social Psychology, researchers found that it takes an average of 66 days for a new behavior to become a habit. Okay. And this is June 9, 2023. So that's, that's pretty updated. Hmm. That's pretty updated. So 66, that's two months. Two months. Two, two months. months and some change. Yeah. Okay. It makes sense. It's a myth? Fuck. That, that, that's the first time I heard that. It's, it's kind of fucked up. Here's the thing, and and maybe unpopular opinion, I think that's all just an individualistic choice. True. If you really want to fucking break a habit, I mean, you could break a habit in fucking a week if you want to. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I've I've quit smoking weed cold turkey numerous fucking times, and sure. it didn't have like weird side effects or anything. I just stopped and just kind of kept it out of sight, out of mind, didn't miss it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think it just it's all up here. It's all it's how strong you want it to be up here. If you tell yourself, hey, I'm going to do this, you know, for X, Y, Z reason, and mm-hmm. you stick to it, you're fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, like, I'll admit it. I gave in to peer pressure yesterday, dude. I was like, damn, the vibes are high. Everyone's having a fucking great time. I did. I gave in. That's not I peer pressure. It's uh, hell don't, yeah. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> bullshit everyone listening and watching. <laughs> you're, you're a shot. You're tired. <laughs> you're around all your drummer buddies. You're like, all right, we're all shot. Oh. Sloppy. <laughs> and you you're fucking, right. and you, you, you took a dirty shot. A filthy shot, dude. Not even a... <laughs> Oh my god, dude! When you when you take a break, it's the best when you have an enjoyable drink, and you, you ruined it. At at the very least, at the end of the night, I redeemed it by having a really, really nice. Are you proud uh, of yourself? I, I mean, I don't know. look at I'm you. A, I'm awake. I'm not hungover. I'm I'm fucking sprightly, dude. I got up early. I'm running on my like, dude. I got up at like fucking seven thirty. I'm fucking lie to me. I got up at seven. I've been awake. Seven thirty. Seven thirty, dude. Okay. Seven thirty. What time did you pass out? Like fucking four thirty. Okay. Oh, it's, yeah. I got three hours, dude. I'm, look at me. I'm fucking great, dude. But but <laughs> that's that's debatable, that's right? Debatable, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. I, I feel fantastic. Okay. Maybe I don't look the greatest, well, what, but I feel fantastic. Well, one, also, one thing just in general about you that people may not know about you: you also just don't sleep in general. This is true for those of you watching in YouTube land. Uh, I'm a uh, Greg is sick. It, right. I'm 37 years old, just turned 37 in November, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I've just always had, I was I was born very early in the morning, like 5.30 in the morning, and I think, I feel like that has something to do with it, just like my natural clock just lends itself to being up early, hmm. and you know, I thought eventually at some point it would like catch up that I would eventually like get into this like habit of being like, okay, if I go to sleep at a respectable hour, I'll get a good amount of sleep, dude. I can, yeah, I don't sleep. I, and, and, and that's no sleep with no drugs, no, no funny business. Just I can be up socializing till four o'clock in the morning, take a three hour nap and then be good for another 24 hours. It just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a drummer. I'm weird. Just, that's all I'll chalk it up to. I don't, I don't all, believe that. <laughs> I don't believe it. I think people say that they're good with no sleep, but I think the majority of us watch these motivational people and be like, oh, I could do that. Dude, I need seven, eight hours. I definitely don't. And you definitely do. I, I mean, yeah, like, should I be getting seven to eight? Probably. Do I? No. It, now, yeah. now, here's, okay, I will admit, here's the thing. You get me fucking being awake three or four days consecutively, mm-hmm. by the end of the week, I'm going to disappear for the weekend. You won't see me. I'll lay in my bed. Just regenerate for all the time I was awake. So yes, sure. but consecutively, I mean, it doesn't. I guess ultimately, what I'm trying to get at is that most people our age, you know, in our mm-hmm. fucking late 30s, early 40s, you know, what they're not functioning on fucking four hours of sleep, dude. They're getting eight to ten, like to mm-hmm. be like okay. I'm still running on three or four, dude. I it's been damn weekend, dude. I've pr- pretty much been awake for three days now, oh my God. and I'm still okay, like. I like legitimately no joke, no bullshit, not trying to hide anything. I feel fine. I feel fine. I, I'm not hungover. I'm not tired. I'm not lethargic. I haven't even eaten yet. I had an iced tea on the way in. That's so bad. And I, well, I mean, we're going to have a nice dinner here in a little bit. Okay, so, yep. you know, I was saving it for dinner. Okay, there we go. That's, cool. that's, see, I'm responsible. Okay. Give me a break, dude. I'm a. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> okay. No, all right. All you know. right. Um, but yeah, you know. If I, I know. did, if I did what you did, this band would not be here. I need sleep to fucking focus. And okay, how am I going to talk to these guys? How am I going to have patience with the fucking four psychos? This is very true. But you know what though? <laughs> hey, Garza is my road dog. We are the two up always the earliest on tour. Yeah, it's me and this guy. It's a battle. It is between six thirty to seven a.m. Who's gonna get the coffee first, dude? Who's gonna get up first? And the last one, I was up a lot. Yo, before like, you. even earlier than before. Use EMG pickups because they help you get the heaviest tone possible. Head over to EMGPickups.com and use my promo code Heavy at checkout and get fifteen percent off. And then once you write the heaviest song of all time, head over to distrokid. Dot com slash VIP slash Garza and save 30% off your membership to get all your songs on all streaming platforms. And now to the heaviest podcast of all time. Four. I was like, where's, okay, Ernie, I guess it's not, put, put I guess it, I'm just fucking killing him. You, you were killing on this last one for I sure. Was, I was, But also, to be fair, shout out Colin. He got me back on the fucking sauce, dude. I started smoking weed heavily again on this tour. And so I was getting taking dabs to the face before going to bed, and I was finally getting more than fucking four hours of sleep a night. I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with the dabs, dude. That shit's <laughs> too much. It's, it's kind of intense. Oh no, dude. That's, it's like it's violently high. Okay. Yes, normally yes. That little puffco thing, you can like regulate how stoned you get because of the temperature like settings on it. If that makes sense, dude. Weed smoking is high tech now, dude. Fucking. The future is now, old man. Like, what ever happened? Just to smoke a joint, dude. Just like, I mean, no, I still very much do that too, of course. But like, is that is that like is that boomer shit now? Oh, a joint? God, I don't want to admit it because we're there. But I mean, kinda. Wow. Everyone's like, nah, dude. Fucking future weed smoke. That it's, that is the thing. Colin, that, right there. Our, that, dude, our light shout guy. Out, shout we'll out, walk Colin. around Constantly, dude. Colin and the Puffco, bro. And it has it attaches to your Jeez. phone. And it has a fucking, dude, it has a counter on it. It tells you how many dabs you've hit out of it from the time you've powered it on. It mm -hmm. literally will tell you. So, like, if you fucking hit it, you know, 15 times in a day on the app, it'll tell you how many times you smoked out of it throughout the day. Like, it's kind of wild. I think if you need a counter to tell you how many times you took a dab in one day, you have a problem. I mean, look at Colin, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but man, he fucking gives us a sick light show and a Col vibe. Colin is an absolute G and a road dog for sure. They make it look so elegant here with a female doing it. Well, of course. How do you think they sell a bunch of these? Those things are fucking 400 bucks a pop, dude. And they'd be selling like hotcakes, dude. Dude, no. Yeah. No, dude. So uh, I like joints. So that's, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, yeah, yeah. I'm a boomer. I would call you a casual smoker. I am I am casual. That's that's it. It's not a boomer thing. You just don't like getting fucking high every day like some people do. I don't like getting high every day, but we were on tour with Chelsea Grin and it kind of just fucking lent itself to that. That was the weed smoking tour for sure. Mm -hmm. Brought me back to my high school roots. I was like, man. I'm back in high school. I'm back in high school. I'm getting stoned every day, laughing at everything, fucking shaking hands, kissing babies on the forehead at meet and greet, all that fun stuff. It's a good time. Hey, what, uh, what's that weed that makes you positive? Oh, you mean like strain wise? Yeah, something I, I, I smoked something on that. I was like, I, I just felt like love. Um, okay. Everything was like, I was like slapping at everything, but in like a nice way. I mean, honestly, you know? it like it's always just been like sativa or uh, indica. Indica's heavy, body high, sleepy time weed. Like you smoke mm -hmm. it before going to bed because it'll knock you out. Mm -hmm. Sativa is like, it's like, I call it productive weed. Like you smoke it and like it's like uplifting. You like I want to go out and do stuff. You're like, oh, I got, that's gonna be know? me in like fucking <laughs> ten years, dude. With the, with the stress that you guys are giving me, I'm <laughs> I'm going great. I'm going great. Where, dude? Oh, fucking. I got three strands right here. Oh, I got three. Brother, you're fine, dude. Look, hey, fun fact. You see this little shit right here? This thing going on right here? There's mm -hmm. three long gray ones that just keep popping out. I just keep fucking plucking them out, and they just keep fucking showing back up, dude. It's, is the, it, it's the beginning of the end, dude. Is it true when you pluck out gray hairs that <sighs> they just grow back? No, but I, they, I thought it, the rumor is that when you pluck a gray out, two more two, two come out. It's is true. That, I fucked up. I should I should have left it. I had one right here, like a month ago, mm -hmm. and I was trimming my fucking. Well, you know, I had a I had to attend a, my grandma's funeral this past weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I was, I cleaned up and like lined up my beard and, and trimmed some of the shit down. Yep. And I was in the mirror, like, like really like, you know, fine detailing it out. And I had plucked one silver one out like 
a month and a half ago, and I got in the mirror, and there was three. The one that I plucked out, and then fucking two more, dude, like directly to the right of it. I was like, you got to mm-hmm. be fucking kidding me. So I freaked out, and like an asshole, I plucked them out, all three of them. So now I'm going to get fucking six now, dude. Oh, no. I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm just going to start trimming them and not actually plucking them out. That's, that's I, be- I believe I believe that folklore, dude. It's It's real, you know? But I will continue to dye my hair and keep this lovely, uh, uh, whatever they call it, uh, guy lights, male ombre that I got going on here. Ombres do look sexy, you know? It looks good under stage lights. When my hair's wet and I'm windmilling, it looks good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool. Well, what's your favorite part about Nam? <sighs> um, because cause people only hear about it, you know? Honestly, uh, well, A, getting to hang with all your friends that you don't see very often because of touring schedules and personal lives being in the way and all that stuff. That's always the most fun. You get it's like it's it is like a big school reunion for all the touring homies to be in one spot at one time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's always like the biggest positive for me. And then right after that, it's you know um, making new business partnerships. You know, checking out new gear. Um, you know, catching up with your endorsers and all that stuff. Seeing the new product and all that stuff. It's always, it's mm-hmm. just, it's like, it's for, you know, if you're not a musician and you're not like in that field, it probably sounds like I'm speaking a fucking foreign language to you. But when you're there, it's very like, we had a super chat. Also, oh, Sterling. Thanks dude. Holy shit. Appreciate hey. it. That's what I'm talking about, man. Sterling drives trucks in Vegas. Yeah. Oh, I, know, I know Sterling. Yeah, yeah. That's the boy right there, dude. Cool. Thank you. Shout out Vegas. Dude. He was at the Lamb Gotcha. Um, what was I saying? Oh, it can, Nam can also be really overwhelming. Like, just the amount of like, just like it's a very like an, an attack on the senses. It is, and it, dude, it's it sensory ha- overload, overload, big time. Audio, visual, everything, emotions, lights, yeah, anxiety, the, the whole dude. Nine. So I was, whole, I was nine. telling uh, when we went to get our our badges or whatever and walk up. You know, I know you know how you get your badge down at the bottom floor this year because they're not using the bottom floor. They're at the top floor. Well, yeah, yeah, but you, normally they use the bottom floor, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's where they were using to get your badges at, like your check-in. Mm-hmm. Dude, we walked in. It was it was me, Nick, Lou, and Mel. We all got our badges and went up. When I was like, hey, where are you at? And then I ended up running into you right then and there. Dude, oh, yeah. like two seconds before you walked up on us, I got to the top of the escalator, and like the sound got louder and louder and louder. And as soon as I was on the main floor, my entire left arm went completely numb, and I started having a panic attack. I was like, "Holy shit! Why? Because I hadn't attack? been I hadn't been around it in so long. It was just like oh, an instant attack on my senses, and I kind of stood there for a second and just did like one of these, like shook it off real quick. Nick was like, Are "You okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, like I'm good." And then you popped up, and I was like, "All right, there." You. I saw you, and I was like, "All right, I feel better." Oh, it was, dude, it was, it, was it was weird. I was like, "Holy shit, that hasn't happened in a long time." Like, just being around this, like, and you saw it. We went over to the, to get a fucking. Uh, like where the where the bar and the drinks and the food was at, yeah. And you were just like, God, dude, just hate this shit. There's so many drugs. It's just it's so loud. Yeah, because well, because we, we got our first drink first. Uh, I was I've kind of popped in and out. I uh, I had two drinks that day. We went we got the beer at in the drum section. Yes, it's a fucking night. It's a nightmare. Yeah, kind of kind of a inopportune place to put the bar. It's like you want people to hang out here and spend money on booze. They're not gonna want to hang out with all these fucking kids no. just making a racket. And that's coming from a drummer that loves being annoying. Like, even I was like, God, is this what it's like to be on tour with me? Mm-hmm. You know, trying to tune the guitars and I'm sitting back there fucking wanking, fucking, you know, and it kind of is, but it's like times 30 because there's like, it's it's also crazy. I remember I remember when Nam made the switch to where like they made it uh, like open to the public, like you could register and, and come mm-hmm. in as a, you know, as an exhibitor or whatever have you. Mm-hmm. And like, there's so many kids walking around Nam now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, whether it's, like, musicians that bring their kids or, like, you know, their teenage kids and like their friends walking around. Mm-hmm. And everyone is just wanking, dude. Like, just pl- hitting all the instruments, making a fucking racket. And, like, they have they have the NAM sound police. That's probably the most hilarious oh, I, I, I saw someone do that. The sound police, dude. They come over and stop you and just fucking embarrass you. They're like... Were you there? Uh, oh, I, I, we, I've seen we, it happen multiple we times. We were... Uh, I don't know if you were with me. I think we just got the beers and if there was someone... Uh, Right by the bar, that was he was just one of those guys that he just know as a sick drummer, and he sat down and started to do like this groove. And I, he, one of those like soul drummers, like just started doing some sick shit. And, he, and right when he hit like the, bum, bum, you see, you can see in his face, he he went somewhere else. He was vibing. He was like he hit the beat. Yeah. And then like, this fucking dude just walks. It was like, 
and Kuma yeah, walks away. Yeah. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Damn. Like, these guys got no chill. They're like, hey, shut it down. Fuck. <laughs> Honestly, don't, don't go in there and start playing drums as loud as you can. Yeah. You know, I'm biased because I'm a drummer and I see cool gear and I want to hit shit and see I what know. it's about. But I, yeah, ultimately, yeah. It's a fine line, you know. They want you to walk up and look at the gear mm-hmm. and, you know, maybe tap it with a stick, see how it sounds. Mm-hmm. And, and I know these, dude, these NAM sound police, these guys are, like, waiting in the fucking corners like cockroaches, He, he dude. came out of nowhere. That's what I'm saying. They just he wait. Like, out of as soon as nowhere. they see someone's butt touch a drum seat and sit down, they're like, red team, go. Go get them. And they just fucking shut it down, dude, quick. It, you was, know? it was pretty fucking quick, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> it's crazy how we're not, we're not designed to be around that many people. No. We're not. No. What's what's weird, so I, I keep saying it, but I'm, I'm 30 years old, and it's just weird being comfortable in those situations now when my whole life I wasn't. It's so weird. Yeah. I, yeah. That it, it's, a, it's the classic case of being desensitized, going to all the shows we've been going to, talking yep. to all these bands and people, meeting people constantly, uh, the gym. I mean, I mean, you name it. Boring stuff I don't want to talk about, like gym, books, whatever. This, uh, learning how to be calm, like, damn, it was like, that was a big moment for me on Friday, just walking in, I'm like, this is different, I feel different. Yeah, totally. I was like, wow, I'm just, it's not a big deal, I'm, I'm calm, there's no anxiety, I don't have to drink, I'm just walking around chilling, it was like, damn, that was, like, it's just, because all your work, this seems pointless, until, like, you kind of have, like, these moments. Yes. I was like, damn, yeah. I'm walking around now, I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm now I'm the guy, I'm the old guy making other people in bands feel comfortable. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I I did that. I I walked up to uh I won't say your names, but uh, a few bands in our our genre. Yeah. I'll I'll say that. Yeah. And I was just saying I walked up and you know, I'm, I'm like, damn, I'm like I'm like the old guy. The old guy I'm like, I'm like, I'm like the yeah. elder the, uh, were the elder statesmen right, in Right, like court, walking dude. up to like, like like the younger bands, yep. probably their first NAM. Yep. I was like, damn, I'm like, I'm asking questions to get a more comfortable and present in the moment. Yeah. It was a trip. I'm like, damn, though, what am I doing? It was a, it was really cool, man. I was like, uh, like, like, it shows that you you could truly change, not being fake, but change who you who you are. Absolutely, Abs- it goes back to wanting to, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and sure. So a lot of the times, it's it's it just kind of comes along with age and experience and like a natural you know progression of yourself. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, having having the urge and want to be like, hey, you know what? I want to change. I want to be better. I want to fucking do things mm-hmm. differently. You know, get gain different perspective, which is another awesome thing about having the kind of career that we have, being able to do what we do for a living. You get the rare opportunity to travel around the globe around this fucking spinning mm-hmm. rock and see how other people live and gain other perspectives of how things are in other places where mm-hmm. people, you know, maybe aren't as fortunate or have things as easy as we have it here. You know, like, um, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, this is being a touring musician has really given me the, the rare opportunity to like be even more humble and more grateful like, you know, because everyone's guilty of it, dude. You start getting complacent. You start getting fucking fussy about shit. Mm-hmm. And you start getting jaded or complaining about shit. Then you go somewhere and you travel somewhere and you're like, fuck, man. Like, I thought I had it fucking bad. And I'm over here complaining about my situation. There's people that dude. don't have clean fucking drinking water, dude. All That's the time. crazy. All like, the time. like basic human needs. All the time. So it's like you come back home and you're like, damn, bro, I'll never talk shit about my fucking toilet seat again or my shitty bed frame or whatever. It's like, bro, I could be living in a fucking box. Or not have a roof over your fucking head, dude. Like, mm-hmm. it's kind of wild. It's kind of wild. But I'm very, like, stoked that that's also the kind of perspective I get out of doing what we do. It's not just, a, hey, we get to travel around the world and look fucking cool on stage for an hour. That's the fun part, for sure. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, taking in everything as a, like, as a whole. It's a, it's a very badass opportunity to get to be able to do that kind of shit. God, dude, we are getting old. <laughs> dude, so I, I, that, that was my, my uh, probably one of the only, probably what, only questions I have for you is that, uh, so you don't, we're not name drop. You're, you're hanging out with a lot of cool drummers, cool bands. Uh, you're, you're, you're in a circle. And how does it feel for you that you're like the worst drummer in that circle? You know, dude, <laughs> feels bad, man. Feels really bad. <laughs> I mean, is that, no. <laughs> what's up? What's up, man? What's up, dude? I was, I was, mean, I was curious. Well, you you know, know, it's not too bad. Dude, I mean, listen, also, 
okay, so, so this is a quick little quick little nugget from yesterday. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people had the most, I don't want to say awkward encounter, but people that just didn't know. Me and Alex Lopez hung out for like an hour yesterday at fucking Nam, like together. And we're like walking around mm-hmm. and people people would be like, oh shit, hey, like, what's up? And, you know, people that might have not known Alex that well or might not know me that well. Sure. And Alex was like, oh, hey, what's going on? Yeah, my Alex, this is Ernie. Yeah, like, he plays drums and suicide silence now. And people were just like, so like, <laughs> what? Like, the fucking faces. And then the faces of people Fuck. that did, <laughs> the funny. faces of people that did know that the switch happened yeah. and saw us walking around, hanging out, fucking laughing together were like, those guys are friends? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? They're supposed to be beefing. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, for what, dude? It's weird that people want to see that shit. And it's like, dude, no, we're good. You know what I mean? It was it was really hilarious. Like, it was you could just, you could walk past people and see them being like, those guys are friends with each other? It's like, yeah, yeah bro, our birthdays are a day apart. We've known each other for like 15 fucking years. Yeah, what's weird about it? Like, he's in a different band now, and I'm in his old band, whatever. Like, it, it, we can laugh about that shit. Yeah. But people are like, I wonder if they're beefing. Totally, like, like we, uh, we 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 hang out in person just to beef. It, yeah, literally. Yeah, we made sure we were gonna hang out at the same time just so we can fucking make people scratch their heads. But yeah, like that was that was actually really hilarious. That was a good time yesterday. Also, check this out. This is I was reminded this morning. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow is officially two years since you called me and said, "Hey, you want to oh, have lunch?" Oh, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow, man. Oh shit! Tomorrow is. Two years, 24 months since this handsome man across the table from me asked me to uh, come down and quit playing my drums like a bitch and hit harder. Yeah. Uh, here we are. Crazy. Santa Ana, dude, this, this city has a lot of history, especially for me. I had a, I, my, I would drive up here as a kid uh, to, to hang out with my grandparents because, That's right. because they were here. It's being a kid, it's just the one place you always go to uh, when... Suicide Silence was in group therapy. It was on the street, 4th Street. Oh, serious? Yeah. So when we're out, like, oh, right, so right, right when Eddie joined the band, just driving on 4th Street, I always drive, drive past that, that big old building in the right. I'm like, damn, there, shit, there it is. That's fucking crazy, and, too. And, I didn't know that and, either. And calling you and, hang, and hanging out around here. Like, this is such, there's yeah. something about, I don't know what, what it is about this area, Santa Ana and Orange County. I don't, I don't know. There's there's history here, dude. It's a lot. It's history. It's a, I, like, it's a lot of history. I mean, obviously, the studio is in Santa Ana. Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't know. It's a, a lot of. I, be, I, be, I believe in, in, like, the universe lining shit up mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Because, I mean, same thing, too. When, when I, uh. When I moved back from Salt Lake City, initially the plan was for me to live in L.A. like mm-hmm. proper, like I was going to live in like fucking West Hollywood. And we went looking. Terrible for, idea. Uh, for oh you. no no no! Tr- trust me when I tell you, it was <laughs> it wasn't all my idea. There was other. Oh, and I got. I got yeah, I you know what I mean. Which I was fine. I was like, I hey, I, you know, as a, as a together decision, I was like, sure, maybe we can find, some, you know, sure, I like you, kind of. Yeah, you know what I mean. But it was just such a fucking crapshoot, dude. Everything was super overpriced, and because well. She or her job paid her in cash, and I got paid in cash. We had no work credit. So they were mm. like, yeah, you don't have bad credit. You just don't have any credit, so we can't approve mm. you for any of these fucking places. Yeah. And somehow wound up here in Orange, staying with a friend at his place till I had enough work credit to get my own place. I never wanted to live here. I was, like, content with, like, moving back to, like, Whittier mm-hmm. or Santa Fe Springs. Moved here, thought I was going to hate it. Ended up loving it, and now I've been here since fucking 2018, and I can't even imagine what it would have been like. If, wow. Yeah, if I had, five, if five I had, six years. Yep, if I had joined the band and been living in fucking L.A. or West Hollywood Ooh. and having to commute from there to Corona, I, I, I guarantee you it probably wouldn't have even worked out as well as it fucking did. You know what I mean? I feel like it would have caused some sort of issue. You know, it but would've. but here we are. You know, and tomorrow will be two years. It's crazy. That shit flew flew by. That shit flew fucking flew by, by, dude. Holy crap. Yeah. Wild. Wild as hell. Well, just so you know, tomorrow you're going to get a phone call from me saying that you're out. So <laughs> that's, the, that's how we're going to celebrate. I'm going to be like, who's playing drums now? They're like, oh, dude, MacBook, dude. MacBook Pro's got it all handled, dude. <laughs> dude, some guys are doing that. I mean, more, I guess, more power to them. I don't know. Do I got to give back the E kit? <laughs> no. I mean, I could fucking play drums at that point. It's real easy to blast beat on that thing. It, 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 it's sick. 
A sick or what? That drum kit plays itself, dude. Nice. Like you, you could be relatively shot, and it'll make you sound good. <laughs> wow. So if you're sick like me, then you're real sick when you play. <laughs> is the is the e kit helping you? You think? Absolutely, dude. This is not like an exaggeration. Um, you is, know, is for it all, making for, it worse? <laughs> definitely not. Oh, well, I'm, I was for for all you lucky drummers out there that have a house or a studio or a garage that you can play your actual acoustic drums in, mm -hmm. I'm very jealous of you. I'm very jealous of you. Uh, you know, I live in Southern California where rent is not inexpensive by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, sucks ass. I live in a condo. I'm very fortunate. My place is very nice, but I do share a wall with the adjoining building. And so I don't think my neighbors would take too lightly to me playing an acoustic kit, and they'd be very loud. So I have not been able to practice consistently well, in almost two years now, because when I joined the band, I moved all my gear down to Corona to the garage. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all I've had is, you know, I've had a practice pad at the house um, and stuff like that. But it's, you know, it's not the same. You're not able to, like, hash out ideas and practice songs and stuff like that without a, f a full kit. And so, you know, uh, we were able to finally uh, lock in an electronic drum set this past month. And as this is fucking crazy, dude. I have played more drums in the last two weeks on my own than I have in probably like a year, which wow. is really badass. And it's sick. I can like, you know, if I'm at if I'm at my mom's like helping her out with my grandma and stuff like that, I can come home late at night, dude. I literally I played the entire Black Crown record the other day at like eleven at night, and not a single fucking person was bothered or annoyed. I wow. put on headphones and just fucking ripped. And it's got like this uh. It has Bluetooth on it, so I don't have to connect a cable or anything. It'll just pick up the audio from your oh, phone wow. or device right through your headphones with the drum set and mix behind it. And Whoa. you just – you have on the actual module like knobs where you can level the audio to your drum kit volume. Mm. And you can record it on the module and then airdrop it to your computer, your device, whatever mm – -hmm. So this is actually, it's really sick. Like, I'm, I've am i never, like, sorry. Did you, did I'm you, playing you, footsies with you, dude. Did What's you kick up? me? Well, I was playing footsies with you, dog. What's up, dude? What the fuck are you doing, man? We're trying to have a conversation. You trying to give me a hug or what, dude? What the fuck are you doing, man? Shh, Come. Just, just kiss me already, dude. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, All but right. no, it, I'll, it's been really, really, for real beneficial. Like, I got up this morning, dude, and just, I sat in my fucking boxers and a t-shirt and fucking just started ripping at like fucking 8 o'clock, 8.30. Wow. It's badass, dude. It's so sick. You just put on headphones and the, the kit that I've already put together and dialed mm -hmm. is so sick. Like it sounds incredible. And you and like and it makes it enjoyable to play because like it sounds good. It feels good. It's mm. obviously much more closer to an actual drum set, the, the model that I have anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really nice. Like it's, nice. it's, it's inspiring to have a tool to like make you want to fucking get up and jam and like – you know, there's there, there will never be a replacement for playing your own acoustic drums, for sure. Mm -hmm. But this is absolutely a close second, and I'm already having a blast. Like, I've just been, like, wow. just shedding. And, like, my playing is already getting stronger, and it's only been, like, two weeks. So it's it's pretty sick. I'm very stoked that we were able to get that fucking locked in. What's the snare that, that you end up going with? It so is, it's, it's a, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it, well, so in the module, you Don't select what either. it is. Oh, okay. I got you, dog. Okay. We are using a Pearl 3x13 <laughs> brass piccolo, baby. Oh, Stri dude. Hey, the, oh, the Soulfly snare. The one from the self-titled self album. Jay, the Roy Mayorga snare. Uh, go to Ross Robinson's Instagram. He posted this yesterday. Oh, no, dude. Is it a gem? It might, it might be the same snare that you're talking about. It might be. A if, if it is, it's because I'm fucking sick, dude. Let's, it, let's, might, it might be let's the same see. one. So I, I didn't know. Until Ross posted this picture that there's bell brass piccolo snares. Oh yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah. And so until he posted yeah. the but until he posted the picture, I was like, oh shit, dude. Yeah, Ross Robinson. Can't fuck with that guy, dude. There it is. Let me see. Click that thing. Oh, okay. No. What is so that? That that is a limited edition Tama bronze snare and it's actually yeah from drum station the actual that shell is an odd size it's like it's it's a four by 14 so it's like a power piccolo it's in between a standard piccolo yes it's in between a standard size pp yeah, yeah the pp I, 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 I put a comment right there <laughs> dude yeah yeah exactly you see it right there a very rare producer Ooh! snare sample pack yes yes 
I, I that's, a, so cool. that's a sick ass fucking <laughs> snare, dude. That's a sick ass. Dude, text him right now. Be like, hey, do you want to sell that to my drummer? He'll buy it. Okay, so you. a very rare yes. producer's snare. Yeah. That's a gem. That's a sick wow. ass fucking snare. Okay. Yes. So that's that's not the one that I have. It's in the kit. Um, but the same the exact snare that Roy used to record the self-titled Soulfly album Dang. is the snare that I'm that I have dialed into that electronic kit. Wow. That's a three by thirteen brass piccolo. Sick as fuck. The uh, first one? The first one. Okay, uh, hey Jay, can you go on YouTube, uh type in Soulfly Eye for an Eye. That's and, the one. And, and let's play for only five seconds so we don't get uh pulls. People need to hear and crank. I, I want that that speaker loud as fuck. I'm drinking great Grey Goose, so I want I want to hear. <laughs> Just crank it, dude. People need to hear the snare. So the, the, so the intro is like 13 seconds. And yeah, before it kicks in. Yeah. Listen to that fucking thing, dude. That's a that that's violent, dude. Yeah, and that's a piccolo. That's fucking violent. And even crazier, Roy still has the snare. He posted a video of him playing it earlier last year. He's like, broke this out of storage, and he gave the whole backstory. Of, oh, he put it up, and then Alex put up a cover of him playing uh, No Hope, No Fear with oh, the snare, yeah, with yeah. The so snare tuned good. exactly so like Roy. It sounds good. insane, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you, dude, kids kids are going to be real fucking scared when we start working on new music, dude. We, I can't give away too much, but. Gosh, dude. The, kid, dude, the We're coming for the kids, dude. Yeah, so Roy posted a, a picture uh, of the snare game. It gave the whole backstory. Yes, I love when people do that. It's awesome. It's so it's so fucking cool. What the hell is that? That's the bell bronze. Oh, that's that's, 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 the, that's yeah, the good that, old. That's, that's the, the, the OG, yeah, that's a, the Terminator. Yeah, that's the Terminator. That's not the yeah, Piccolo. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even this morning, I, once Ross posted that picture, it got me thinking. Like, man, what what did David use? And there uh, was a yeah, a mul- a multitude. Of different snares, David. David might be one of the guys that was like he really was also like he also used a lot of wood wooden snares. Mm. I've never been a wood snare guy. I've always been like a metal metal shell, copper, mm. brass, aluminum. I love them all. Now, not to say that I mean I do. I have you get, I have owned wood snares. You get that brass dick, dude. <sighs> Sturdy, yeah. Sturdy, dense, you know what I mean? Solid. It's a good foundation. <laughs> it's a to good have. foundation, dude. Um, yeah. Uh damn, I can't believe Ross has that snare. That's a that's a fucking sick one, dude. That's a that's a dope one. So that just came out or what? It's no. Uh th- so that that company, drum station or whatever, it's a drum shop somewhere. I don't know where they're based out of. They're in the States, maybe. Mm. But like Tama made them like five or ten units as a collab. Mm. Type of thing, like with the name drum station on the badge and all that shit. Oh shit! And they were only made in that size for like a few months, type of thing. So it is, shit. it is essentially a rare find. Um, but they, they, they do exist. They are floating around. Um, I, uh, yeah, man. I don't know, dude. We find, but we got it locked in. I got the piccolo. It sound, I have the piccolo, sound? dude. How do you think it sounds? Like the fucking best thing ever, dude. Your playing is was a problem. I mean, all that means is that it's gonna sound even better. If I play it, if you play it, I don't know. I feel like your rim shots are kind of weak, dude. I don't know. Yeah, I'll play, dude, if, <laughs> if I practice for one day, I'm 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 already there, dude. He does have the signature guards of blast, dude. One day, have, we'll I, bring the kit in here, and I'm gonna, we're gonna do it live on the air. You can watch him fucking do one beat. <laughs> I got I got one blast. <laughs> he said I got one in the chamber, dude. That's all. That's it. How how hungover are you? You you're, you're all right? You good? I'm fine. I'm good. I'm chilling, dude. Like I I feel nice. Mm-hmm. You know. Boys, boys and girls always hydrate. That's the ticket. Mm-hmm. Even, even in my, 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 my seal breaking yesterday, and you know, inevitably parting with the gang, I still had the good mind to always get a bottle of water. Every two cocktails, it's a a, a, a sixteen ounce bottle of water. Mm. It'll keep things running smoothly. Mm-hmm. You know, don't ever underestimate water. Don't it's, ever you, do you, that. You need it to survive, dude. The human, the human body is crazy, and I know it can do a lot of incredible things, even when you like push it to its limits. Mm-hmm. But water is one of those things you just don't want to be without, dude. I've, I've seen the effects of not drinking water, and they're never good. <laughs> Unfortunately, what, ma- makes you, uh, what makes you... What makes the hangover non-existent 
is terrible for you. Is when you l- eat late at night. Yep. That's a it's a good uh yep. it's a good cure for the morning, but it but, is, but it's yeah. But you had pizza at two AM or bean and cheese burrito, like I, I do at one AM. And that and that and that could be a big issue. I mean, not when you're buff like you are though, dude. Like you, you truly have trained your body to metabolize beans and cheese and tortillas into fucking like Bicep muscles. Just this pure spiritual foundation. Guys, this is fucking <laughs> You're the only guy I know that eats chocolate chip cookies at 2 a.m. and gets more handsome and buff, dude. Like, oh this shit's gosh. not fair, dude. I do weigh more than I ever have in a long time. But it's different now because back then I weighed 170, but it was like I didn't work out at all. Now it's like. No fucking way you ever weighed 170. 170 Seriously? 170. It was bad. And then now I'm 164. But it's different now. You're like you're like a healthy 164 though, because like, now now I'm like well, there's you're killing it. It's all muscle. It's a lot it's of all muscle, muscle, dude. But it's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of obvious. Um, <coughs> dude, someone left donuts here the other day. So one 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 of the bands I think it was uh, Nervosa. I saw I saw the donuts on the fucking table. I was like, oh. Garz is weak. He was like, damn, I'm fucking crushing that box right now, dude. Like, oh shit. Where were they from? <laughs> were they were they good donuts? Yeah, they're the Hostess chocolate ones that. Oh oh, like the little fucking. They make you super focused. <laughs> well, say not not a bad live. I think we're good. Yeah. We Damn, did we ever did we burn through an hour already? That was fucking. Yeah, I think, quick. I think we're shit. at uh, fifty. Uh, maybe we can ask <coughs> if anyone wants to shoot a question. We're just gonna. Yeah, let's take a question or two real quick. Be uh, be chilling. So just so everyone knows, Ernie didn't have to do this. I literally hit, I literally hit you up yesterday. Hey, you want you want to come down? I'm always down to get on here. Appreciate that, and man. Just, you know, we just make funny faces at each other and and look at the kid. The kids are chilling, dude. Let's holy let's see. What shit. do we? People anything in there? Oh, I'm, I'm not gonna read it. I'm, I'll read the. I'm, I'm scared. Uh, I saw one that says, uh, "Was for Ernie." It was about what's your favorite Black Crown song to play? Ooh, oh, there you go. Fucking slaves to substance all day long, dude. Favorite Black Crown song to play? <laughs> slaves, slaves to substance. substance. Also, crazy way to open a record. Just fucking bam, bam. Like, how are you going to be mad about that? I think that's probably the only... We wrote two riffs when we were in Big Bear, and that, that was one of them. The oh, dun, shit, dun, really? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. The yeah. rest Hand, was... Hands down, ha- like, without question, on the Black Crown, uh, Slaves of Substance. And then, it's one that we don't play live, and mostly probably because of the guitar tuning, but, dude, Witness the Addiction. I like that song. It's a great song. It's a fucking... It's, it's groove. Have you heard the version with uh, Mitch on it? It's sick. Wait, what do you mean? Because you know what John's John sings the chorus, but oh, there's a version with Mitch singing. Yeah, the singing chorus? the chorus. Yeah, because no, because we didn't know. Oh, if he was gonna do it or not? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We didn't know. Damn. Uh, everyone says the volume is low, but but fuck it. Anyway, uh. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, we yeah. uh, we we wrote two riffs and and drank six six to seven handles of vodka. That's so why, that's why the black crown is a. Sick we as it drank is, dude. more handles of vodka than we did to write riffs <laughs> up there, wrote riffs. and we were up there for a fucking month. We like oh we like got to get away. It was like it was snowing too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I remember the videos. Yeah, I've seen and, you know, you know, there's videos out there in a story, oh, yeah. but we probably wrote two to three riffs, and we. For sure, 100% for sure, we drank more handles of vodka than we wrote riffs. <laughs> total. Total. What a time to be alive, dude, for fucking sure. But sometimes, <laughs> you, ugh, I get it. You got to fucking try ideas. and Yeah. And ultimately, you can look back at that time fondly and be like, damn, that was wild. And you still turned out a wild album. You know what I mean? It's pretty shocking that their record came out that well. I don't. Yeah. It's really fucking tough. Yeah. I, I'm 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 very surprised, but you know what though? I also I also kind of feel like obviously processes and and writing sessions stuff like that. The older you get, time changes and you know, uh, you know priorities change and all that stuff. I'm still real stoked that even being a part of the band now, it's like our writing process is pretty organic and sick. Like I love that we get in the room together and just fucking spill still spill it out. It. You know what I mean? I feel still like it's the sickest it. way to write. Still there. Yeah. Uh, Sterling, last question, then we're going to wrap, wrap, wrap the shit up. Uh, Garza, what is your overall favorite song to play? Uh, it still changes. 
it, it changes. Um, it might be. Uh, it might be unanswered. The fucking it good old classic. Be, it might be unanswered and uh, no pity. That's where my brain's going. Those are two very sick songs, especially live. Yeah, this is some parts where it just feels good to fucking headbang to. Like, like, like the end of No Pity, you just know the energy is really high. Um, obviously, the end of Unanswered, like the yeah. any, any kind of like groove like that, it just feels really good to play. And it's when we're all on fire, yeah. it's just like fuck. You, you just kind of just take, you kind of just go to that place again. It's crazy. Yeah. You know which one did it for me on this tour was Lifted, dude. Oh, look at Sick. I'm glad we put that in the fucking set. That shit is... The that's, song. A, that's a fucking ripper live, dude. Especially for drums. That, that's oh, that's yeah. a very drum song. Lots of toms. Lots of toms. Shout out, Alex. Those are... I, they're, they're really easy, fun fills to play, and they're in there so much, but it like really makes the song, I think. Yep. Well, yeah, shit. That's it. Cool. Uh, Another one in the books, dude. So, yeah, this is coming out... Literally, we're going to be out in Europe somewhere with Lionheart. Check oh, that's out, right. Check out the dates. Uh, Lionheart, Klubicon, uh, Pale Face. Literally, as you're watching, listening to this, we're out we there. We'll be out there doing that, yeah. And uh, Ernie didn't have to do this, but just so you all have something to watch and listen to. We I'm always down. Fucking hungover. We're about to have a, our first ever podcast meeting today. And Ernie, our it's team, a- Jay, Zach... Our manager Mal and uh, my lady is also coming out. It's gonna be a big family, and uh, I also I also barely got here. My uh, my car broke down on the freeway. Oh shit! Yeah, we're gonna talk it's, about this in a second. <laughs> yeah, holy shit! That's so that that's a whole story that I'll talk about on, on the next one. But I you know, and then you I was know, on the side of the freeway on on, on off ramp. The on, worst part. On that note, dude. Cheers to fucking cars cheers, breaking down, dude. Fuck. Cheers <laughs> to you. Cheers to uh, uh. Also, real quick, things when things like that happen to you. It's like fuck. Why, why, why? Like, why is this happening? It's, this shit fucking sucks. But it could always be worse. Exactly. It's like my car happened to start again, <clears throat> and I, it was a drive, a bit drive out. I'm like, but uh, it could have been the car wouldn't maybe couldn't have started at all. Maybe like if I got out of my car to check the engine, someone could have hit me. Which, like, yeah, which, which that was fucking like, wild. It's, it's, it's a thought. Like, wait, yeah. you hear, hear all the time. Like, shit. Like, it I, could always be worse. Kind of way. So uh, obviously, it was best case scenario. Got got back on the road in ten minutes. It's kind of give it, the engine some time to. Uh, to breathe a little bit, so barely got here, but we don't give a fuck. There's no excuse. We're this, getting it done. We're fucking we're getting, getting it done. done, dude. Anyway, uh, Ernie, love you, dude. Love cheers, you, buddy. cheers. Uh, cheers to you break breaking the seal. I don't, <laughs> I don't appreciate you playing footsie with me during the podcast. Anyway, you love it. All right, everyone, that's it. Later.